Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This again is Mr. VG, and this is a short little video about the basics behind Pythagoras. If you haven't watched the previous video about the theory of Pythagoras, I encourage you to go and watch it now. Make sure you've got it nailed down. So when we look at this first example, I'm asking you to calculate the length of the side AC or calculate X. Remember, you always have to give reasons for your statement. So go and try it. Go and try it. First of all, let's start with there is a 90 degrees. This means we can use Pythagoras. So AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared or Pythagoras. That is our reason for our teacher or for the examiner. Please remember you have to give a reason. When we look at that length of AC, we can now substitute our values in. X squared is equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared. You might ask, oh, sir, can I not just straight go to this step? You are more than welcome to. Go for it. Please just remember your reason. If, you, if that's going to be your first step, then you have to write that next to that. Remember, statement, reason. Take off that geometry hat and use your algebra hat. Let's calculate the squares. Let's add them up. Now I'm sitting with x squared equal to 169. And now at this juncture, at this point, I've got to now ask myself, um, at this junction, not juncture, junction. At this junction, I've got to ask myself, how do I calculate a square? How do I get rid of a square? Well, the inverse operation, and I'm putting it very basically, is a square root on both sides. Because that will give me what number multiplied by itself gives me 169. Well, that answer is 13. Don't you know that? Now, interesting little thing that I want to write down is now I've got 5 to 12 to 13, which is interesting that it is actually a Pythagorean triplet. In other words, if the short side is 5 and the other short side is 12, then the hypotenuse will always be 13. Interesting. There's actually a number of those, like three, four, five. Three, four, and five. And also all the multiples of three, four, five. So if I times everything by two, six, eight, ten, how did I get it? I times everything by two. In other words, three squared plus four squared is equal to 5 squared. The same with 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to 10 squared. Let me just remember my 10s. There are so many of those. You can actually go and memorize them. That if I see one as being 12 and the other one as 5, I can automatically write, that one's going to be 13. Why? Because of Pythagoras. This is awesome, guys. This is awesome. Love it. Oh, I'm getting carried away. Getting carried away. Let's try another example. What, do, what if I now give you the hypotenuse? But remember, I gave you a 90 degrees. Just set up your equation. Always start by setting up your equation. x squared plus 7 squared is 10 squared because of Pythagoras. Now I'm going to calculate my values and I'm going to solve x as if it's an algebra equation. So I'm going to take that 49 over and I end up with x squared equal to 51. Now I need to get rid of that square. So I'm going to square root on both sides. So x is the root of 51. Interestingly enough, there's no perfect number. If I square root, it gives me 51. This is why it's believed that Pythagoras actually gave birth to irrational numbers. 
If you haven't heard about those, it's numbers that doesn't fit normal fractions. But I'm not going to go into details because then this video is going to be like 15 or 20 minutes long. But if I put this in my calculator, I get an approximate value of 7,14 dot, dot, dot. This is the basics of Pythagoras. So ladies and gents, have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. Please tune in, in the next video where we're going to go into the more difficult, the more hectic Pythagoras type sums. And then after that, we're even going to look at the application sums. But please stay tuned. This is Mr. VG. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Keep safe. Stay warm. Cheers.